Great. Well, um, <clears throat> thanks so much for the invitation to come talk. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be talking about some joint work in progress with uh, Roberto Sfaldi. We're going to be talking. I'm going to talk about some, uh, I guess, some features about fondo foliation. So I guess um, I, I want to start off by just define. I'll be defining foliations for you guys, and then running through some like you know basic examples, which maybe convince you that these are pretty um, natural objects in terms of geometry, but they also have some kind of odd features um, about them, which we, we don't see in, uh, in the case of varieties. Um, and then uh, I'll go on to talk about some boundedness results that uh, I've been working on with Roberto Spaldi. So, um, so first off, what, what is a foliation? Um, so let's let X be a, a complex variety. So a foliation um, is just the data of a coherent subsheaf, TF, um, which satisfies two properties. Uh, the first one is integrability, so the, the foliation is closed under Lie bracket. Um, and then the, the second condition is uh, that Tx mod Tf is torsion free, so it's, it's, a, it's a saturated subsheaf. Um, the, the rank of the foliation is just its rank as a sheaf. Um, and in complete analogy with the case of varieties, we can define a canonical divisor of the foliation, Kf, and it's just a V divisor Kf such that O of Kf is the determinant of the tangent bundle of the foliation or tangent sheaf of the foliation. Um, again, this is uh, when, when we have the foliation with, when I guess when we have the trivial foliation, so Tf is equal to Tx, this just recovers the usual definition. Okay, um, so we the singular locus of the foliation is just the locus where uh, the tangent sheaf fails to be a subbundle of Tx. Um, I, I, I'm cheating a bit here, maybe this, this definition really is only valid when X is a smooth variety, but it, it's not such a big cheat. Um, so in other words, uh, if we think of the tangent sheaf of the foliation as being just a bunch of vector fields, the singular locus is just where one or some of these vector fields are vanishing. So by the, um, by the saturatedness condition, um, we know that the singular locus is always co-dimension at least two in our variety. Um, we also have an exact sequence, um, so we can look at the uh, the quotient um, of TF uh, TX mod TF, and we can we can double dualize it, and we get the uh, the normal sheaf NF. So NF is just uh, uh, TX. Uh, oops, that's weird. Uh, uh, double dual. So that th this is just th this is just the normal sheaf right here, um, and so we. The, the failure of surjectivity onto the normal sheaf here is just measured exactly by I of Z, where Z is the singular locus of the foliation. Um, so in particular, um, take, oh, wait yeah. a second. I mean, uh, the, this doesn't exactly make sense uh, if TF uh, is not, uh, well, if it doesn't have the right rank equal to the dimension of X minus uh, one. Uh, sorry, I'm not trying to understand the, uh, the question well, exactly. If, well, this uh, well, what you assume is probably that NF is a line bundle, right? Um, no, I'm not assuming NF is a line bundle. No. I mean, it, ultimately, I, I, I mean, ultimately, we'll, uh, I'll be restricting the case of surfaces where this is true. But um, yes, but, but I mean, in general, this is not true. You can't write it in this way. Um, I guess I want to assume X is normal in addition to, the, to, to everything I've been saying. So this is probably OK. No, uh, even in that case, it's not. Mm, OK, well, maybe we'll have to talk about this later. But I guess let's just assume uh, that maybe NF is a line bundle just to make things easy. This, is, this isn't such a big deal. Or well, that's all we'll, we'll need in the end. Um, uh, OK, but so anyway, um, we get the following. Uh, a junction formula uh, from this, we get Kx is equal to Kf plus the uh, the determinant of the uh, the co-normal, the co-normal bundle or co-normal sheaf. Um, oops. Okay. So uh, another way to think about um, affiliation comes from this uh, classical theorem of Frobenius. Um, so let's let X be a, a smooth complex variety and let F be affiliation, um, and let's let X be a uh, a smooth point of the uh, the foliation. Um, so the Fabius theorem says that in an analytic neighborhood of the foliation, there exists a holomorphic submersion 
um, u to v such that the uh, the tangent sheaf of the foliation is exactly the uh, the relative tangent sheaf of this holomorphic submersion. Um, so in particular, I, I guess the point of this is that locally speaking, a foliation is just uh, is just totally trivial. It's just a it's just a, a smooth vibration. Um, but of course, globally speaking, this is really far from being true. And we'll see some some examples in the next uh, next few minutes um, explaining that. Um, so uh, another definition, and I think this will, be, this will probably be the last major definition we need, or the last two major definitions we need, is um, the first is a, a leaf of a foliation um, is just a, a holomorphic immersive manifold whose dimension is equal to the rank of the foliation um, and uh, such that the uh, differential uh, uh, on the tangent bundle of the leaf uh, factors through the, uh, the tangent sheaf of the foliation. Um, so I, I guess another way of, of viewing a leaf is that these uh, a leaf locally is just a union of fibers of this holomorphic submersion given by um, the uh, uh, by Frobenius theorem. So it's just a union of these fibers. So it's somehow maximally uh, you know a maximally like a an orbit of the differential equations defining the foliation. Um, and we say a, a closed subvariety V um, is tangent to F. If um, away from the singular locus, uh, v is uh, v is contained in a leaf. Okay, um, so let's look at some examples. So um, the first pretty easy example is let's just take v to be the vector field x partial x plus y partial y on uh, C two. Um, so the leaves are just well, the leaves are are, are lines to the origin minus the origin. So the origin is the unique singular point of the foliation. Um, and you know this one's pretty easy to explicitly integrate, so the leaves are just these lines minus points. Um, and the important thing is that it extends to a vector field on all of P2, which vanishes along the line at infinity. Um, so this gives a morphism from OP2 into uh, the tangent sheaf of P2. Um, now this it's not saturated because it is a zero in co-dimension one, namely it vanishes along the line at infinity. Um, uh, I guess I should mention that it's it's a rank one subsheaf, so the integrability condition is automatically satisfied. Um, and we can compute that um, the uh, canonical sheaf of this foliation is O of minus one. So as I said, the um, the leaves are, are rational curves, um, again, minus the unique singular point of the foliation. Again, this this foliation is a unique singular point. Um, and more generally, I, you know, any, any, any pencil gives a foliation whose singular locus um, I guess it's the base locus of the pencil together with any um, singular points on singular fibers of the uh, of the pencil. So this is a very simple foliation. It's just a, a pencil of lines on P2. Um, we can try something similar. We can take um, the following vector field on C2, um, where instead of taking you know uh, x partial x plus y partial y, we uh, we perturb it by an irrational constant. So we look at lambda y partial y, um, and on C2. We have uh, exactly two algebraic leaves, um, so namely uh, the uh, x and y axes, again, minus the origin. Um, v, we can check extends to a vector field in P2 without zeros in co-dimension one, and so it defines a foliation G. Um, here's my attempt at drawing the picture. So the straight lines here are the, uh, the three coordinate, uh, coordinate lines, and they're all invariant by the foliation. And this squiggly line um, is my attempt at drawing uh, a generic leaf. Um, so a generic leaf to this foliation is uh, going to be Zariski dense. It's just an analytic uh, immersed submanifold. Um, this example is simple enough that you can explicitly integrate it and write down a parameterization of the vector uh, of the leaf, but it's not going to be algebraic. Um, so again, you know, it's, G is defined by a global vector field without zeros in co-dimension one, and so we can just compute pretty straightforwardly that Kg is just O of P2. Um, by our adjunction formula, we see that the uh, co-normal bundle of G is just O of minus three. Um, and as I, said, as I said, it's three algebraic leaves and every other uh, leaf is Zariski dense. Um, I just want to make a quick remark is that it, in a typical foliation on P2 um, won't have any algebraic leaves. So this is the first example where we, where we begin to see sort of the generic phenomena of how foliations in general behave. They're, in general, they're very highly transcendental. Um, but as we'll see, this is actually this is in contrast to to fauna foliations, which we'll introduce in a bit, where the um, there's a lot more algebraicity to the leaves. So um, 
let's let uh, P2 and G be exact on the previous side. So it's the uh, the foliation uh, generated by a, a non-vanished or you know a, a vector field on P2 without zeros in co-dimension one. And let's uh, consider projection from P3 P3 down to P2 be projection away from a point. <clears throat> so we can pull back G to a foliation G tilde on P3, and we can think of this as being the cone over the foliation G. Um, and we can do this construction as following. Well, um, so let omega be a meromorphic one form on P2, which annihilates the vector field defining G. Um, we can pull back our meromorphic one form to P3, still gives us a meromorphic one form. And we can look at the vector fields which are annihilated by this, by this meromorphic one form. Um, you can check that the integrality condition is satisfied. It's a foliation of rank two. Um, the leaves of G tilde are just gonna be pullbacks of leaves of G. Um, minus the singular point. Uh, the leaves are all uniruled, so they're they're covered by rational curves tangent to G tilde, so namely just the uh, the fibers of this projection away from point. And finally, KG is equal to O of minus, or KG tilde is equal to O of minus one. Um, this last inequality just holds because the the conormal bundle of G tilde is just the pullback of the conormal bundle of G, which is O of minus three, and then we apply our earlier adjunction formula, uh, namely k of g tilde is k of p3 minus the conormal, so we get k of g tilde is o of minus one. So these are three really concrete examples of foliations. I want to give a more maybe abstract um, example of a foliation, and it's let's start off with a, a normal projective variety of dimension n with an ample divisor h, and suppose that the uh, the first term class of the tangent sheaf dotted with uh, hn minus one is positive. Um, and suppose that we have some destabilizing subsheaf. Um, so of course E is saturated, um, but also the map from the second wedge power of E to Tx mod E, um, just given by taking the, the Lie bracket um, and, and quotienting by E, um, it, this, has, this map has to vanish purely by slope reasons. Um, but this is exactly the same thing as saying that E is a subsheaf which is closed under Lie bracket, and so E is equal to TF for some foliation F on our variety. So uh, I just throw this example in here just as a way you know, to, to emphasize that these are very natural objects and they show up in lots of situa geometric situations of interest. So um, just one general question we can have in mind is, well, what can we say about F? I mean, this isn't a whole lot of data necessarily, but maybe, maybe you know, we can actually say something in general about, about F. Um, so, okay, uh, so let's just uh, start off with the following definition. Uh, a fauna foliation is a foliation such that minus kf uh, is ample. Maybe I'll, I want to restrict to the case really maybe where f is log canonical, and we'll, I'll, I'll define what I mean by log canonical foliation in a bit, but just for the moment, we'll, we'll work with this definition. Um, so examples one and three um, are both fauna foliations, and they're both unruled. So this isn't a coincidence, it's actually a, a, a great theorem by uh, Mioka, uh, Vogelmal, Vakulin, and uh, Campano Pound, and there's also been a proof given by uh, by Nick Shepherd Barron, which says that um, if we have a normal projective variety and a foliation such that KF is not pseudo effective, then then that foliation is always unruled. Um, so in particular, every font of foliation is unruled, and this is you know completely analogous to the case of varieties. So the the important thing is is that um, both are, we're producing rational curves in, in our variety from negativity of the canonical bundle of the foliation, but also the rational curves we're producing are tangent to the foliation. And this is this is a crucial a crucial fact about it. Um, I guess what we see, uh, and this tells us also immediately that, that this mystery foliation we saw in example four, so this foliation coming from a destabilizing subsheaf of the tangent sheaf um, is, um, uh, uh, is also unruled. Um, another thing, an, another observation I want to draw your attention to, um, and this is a, an important point, is that um, in our two examples, so examples one and three um, of fauna foliations, every rational curve is passing through a single point. Um, so this isn't uh, a coincidence. Um, and this is somehow the beginning of all the troubles that we have for fauna foliations. Um, so, I want to talk about this more in a bit, but I just want to draw your attention to this fact that we have lots of rational curves all passing through a single point is um, is a very relevant feature of the whole story. Um, so I, 
I want to now maybe give a, a kind of classical definition from foliation theory. Um, so let's say we have a germ of a foliation singularity. And what we can look at um, is we can look at the set of all holomorphic germs tangent to f passing through the singular point. So zeros are are, are singular point of the foliation. Um, let's uh, maybe what I want to do is I want to uh, restrict to the case. Maybe I should should say in this case that let's let's assume that f is co-dimension one, um, although this isn't this isn't super necessary. Um, it's it, it's a highly non-trivial fact that this um this set's actually non-empty when f is co-dimension one. Um, so we say that the foliation is dicritical. If, if the union of these uh, these holomorphic germs is dense in C1, Cn and it's non-dicritical otherwise. So the um, the point is is that examples one and three are uh, are dicritical. So we had in, in both these cases we had lots and lots of rational curves passing through a singular point of the foliation. Um, example two is non-dicritical. So only the three coordinate only the three coordinate lines are passing through the singular locus of G, and are are tangent to G. So um, somehow the examples we saw we saw that all the two examples we have are dicrit foliations are are dicritical. So um, I guess from here on out I just want to focus on the case of surface foliations. I mean maybe. Maybe I was already thinking in the back of my mind that this is this is what we wanted to specialize to. And I mean, a lot of what I'm going to, what I'm going to talk about in the rest of this talk, um, it, it generalizes to higher dimensions. But um, just for simplicity, uh, I want to focus on the case of surface foliations here, because even in this case, there are still some serious problems which aren't aren't at all obvious uh, how to solve. Um, so as I promised, um, we can define notions like canonical and log canonical for foliations. Um, and it's pretty much completely analogous to the, to the usual story um, for, uh, for varieties, but there's a little bit of a twist. So um, let's just start off with a foliated surface, XF, with KF Q Cartier. Um, and let pi from y to x be a birational morphism, and let G be the strict transform of the foliation. So again, we can, we can create this strict transform by, um, by pulling back uh, either one forms which define the foliation, or we can, you know, just take the transform of the sheaf defining TF and then saturate it inside uh, inside uh, the tangent tangent bundle of Y. So we can we we, we have a, we have a way to take strict transforms of uh, foliations. Um, and so what we can do, as completely as usual, we can write um, KG is equal to the pullback of KF plus some sum over the exceptional divisors, where the EIs are all pi exceptional, and we define uh, an invariant iota I. Um, and we say I I is equal to zero if EI is tangent to the foliation, and um, it's equal to one if it's transverse. Um, so we say that F is uh, canonical, or respectively log canonical, if AI, um, sorry, there's a, there's a little typo here, it should be that AI is, um, AI is bigger than, equal to zero, this is canonical, and AI is bigger than negative yoda i, um, and this is the uh, log canonical. So it's it, it's like the usual definition of canonical and log canonical. We have this additional twist of um, yoda i, and we need this there. Um, I guess I also want to draw your attention that if all the uh, yoda i's, if, if every if every exceptional divisor is tangent to the foliation then um, the notions of log canonical and canonical uh, coincide. OK, um, so again, yeah, so maybe just give, give an example. So let's look at our, um, our very first example. So we have x partial x plus y partial y on C2. Um, so recall that this one is dicritical, right? The, the, the leaves are just these lines passing through the origin. And let's blow up the origin um, with exceptional divisor E. Um, now you can explicitly compute this one by hands. Um, you know, it, it's just an easy exercise, and you can show that the uh, the, the transform of, this, of the vector field in just this one blow try to give um, is uh, is s partial s. Um, and so, in particular, this foliation has a zero in codimension. When we take the strict transform of this vector field, it acquires a zero in codimension one. So um, after saturating, um, we get a foliation which is our strict transform foliation. 
such that the exceptional divisor is transverse to the foliation and um, the, uh, uh, whoops, should be a, a minus. Sorry about that. Um, and such that K of B inverse F is equal to B star KF minus E. Um, and I just want to mention that Yoda of E, this is just, um, it's just one because E is transverse to the foliation. So uh, we see that in fact, our foliation uh, is log canonical. Um, I guess I also want to draw your attention to the fact that the, the transformed foliation is smooth. Um, this is un this is not always the case, um, as the next example shows. So let's look at um, let's change our plus to a minus. So let's look at um, x partial x minus y partial y. Um, so the leaves are the fibers of the map, um, just uh, x y. So the, this fully this singularity emits a, a holomorphic first integral. Um, and let's consider the uh, the blow up of uh, C two at the origin. Same story. Um, so uh, again, you can, you can again just explicitly compute that um, V lifts to a, a holomorphic vector field on X. Um, and in particular, again, you know, just by the same computation as before, um, it had, you can see that it has no zeros in co-dimension one. Um, the exceptional curve is tangent to the foliation of this case, and there's no saturation, which is needed. And we get that this blob is actually crepit. Um, but I just want to draw your attention to the fact that the, the, the strict transform of this foliation is still singular. I mean, you know, you're going to actually produce two singular points along the exceptional divisor where it meets the transform of the x-axis and the y-axis. Um, so, and, and you can continue to blow up as much as you'd like, and you're, you're never going to resolve the singularities of the foliation. Um, but the foliation is non-dicritical. Um, so I, I bring this up because I just want to emphasize the point, and this is a key difference, or a key difference between the foliated story and the classical story, is that it's not possible to resolve um, an arbitrary singular an arbitrary singular foliation to a smooth foliation. Um, in general, blowups are just going to add more and more singularities. Um, uh, but what you might hope for is um, maybe you could think something like, well, maybe we can resolve a, a foliation to a foliation with canonical singularities. So in the case of surfaces, this is known to be true. Um, this is a result of a, a classical result of Seidenberg. That any surface foliation could be resolved to one with canonical singularities. Um, uh, in dimensions three, this is a some. This is also known thanks to work of uh, Felipe Cano and also uh, Daniel Panazzolo and Michael McQuillan. But in dimensions four and above, the answer it, not much is known. So this is uh, the question of resolving to canonical singularities uh, for foliations in dimensions four and up is, uh, as far as I know, completely open. Um, so, I, I mean, that's probably more than a weekend project, but, you know, it's, it's an interesting one to think about. Um, so with that, uh, but again, you know, the, the important, the, the nice thing is that, you know, even if we don't know the existence of a resolu of resolution to smooth things, we can still make sense of the, the, the classical notions of, uh, of singularities from the perspective of the minimal model program. Okay, so at any rate, um, these two examples um, uh, I just gave, so we have a log canonical singularity, which is dicritical, and a canonical singularity, which is non-dicritical, typify um, the, uh, the general case. So this is just a general fact. Um, if you have uh, a foliated surface and you have a log canonical foliation, then it's canonical if and only if it's non-dicritical. Um, so I'm gonna, you know, maybe, I got enough time to explain maybe a proof of this, or I'll, I'll give a quick explanation of, of, of how, the, how the proof of this works, um, but then I wanna, show how we can use this to um, say something interesting about Fano foliations. Um, so basically this, this fo follows from the following characterization of uh, log canonical uh, foliation singularities. So let's say we have a germ of foliation singularity and suppose that it's generated by a vector field um, partial. Um, if, uh, if M is our maximal ideal, then we actually get an induced linear map on the uh, Zariski tangent space. Um, and that's just because, uh, you know, because the vector field is singular, the, the origin it preserves, you know, the, the maximum ideal is, is invariant underneath the derivation with respect to this, this vector field. Um, and so th there's a, this general fact um, that F is log canonical if and only the, if this linear map is non-nilpotent. And moreover, it's, um, it's, it's actually strictly log canonical um, if and only if, so up to scaling by a constant, the eigenvalues of partial zero are, are, partial, are positive integers. 
so it, it's something of the form. Um, so, you know, P uh, partial partial X um, plus Q partial partial uh, Y, um, where P and Q are positive integers. And in this case, we can explicitly integrate. Um, so th th this is this is a, a log canonical guy. Um, and in this case, we can actually explicitly integrate this one by hand to produce lots and lots of germs of curves passing through the origin. So again, the point is that log canonical means, like strictly log canonical means dicritical. There are lots of curves passing through the origin. Okay, um, so what I want to prove for you is that um, th this theorem of um, uh, Stefan Giroir and Car Carolina Ruscio, I mean, they prove something much more general, but you know, like I said, we're just focusing on the surface case. Um, so log canonical uh, surface relations are always dicritical. Um, in particular, they're strictly log canonical. So again, what, what do we mean by strictly log canonical is that they're they're not log terminal. They're not canonical. They really are log canonical on the nodes. So um, maybe I just want to uh, sketch a quick proof of this. So suppose, for sake of contradiction, that we had some fonofoliation affiliation with canonical singularities. So by by compound pound and of course everyone else that I, that I listed um, at the start there, um, this foliation is unruled. And so it's birational to a rational fibration. Um, so after some, you know, by, you know, maybe some blowups or whatever, uh, we get a rational fibration x prime down to b. Um, but the point is that f has canonical singularities. We're supposing for sake of contradiction, and so they're non-dicritical. And so the indeterminacy locus of phi is empty. In other words, um, x is a p1 fibration already, which induces the foliation. And this is where the problem starts. So. Um, we almost have an equality, the canonical bundle of F is equal to the canonical bundle of X over B. Um, they're going to general, they're not equal in general because of the presence of multiple fibers. Um, but it, I, I guess you have to take my word that we can, we can, we can base change freely um, in this case, and we can reduce to the case where um, there are no multiple fibers in our fibration. Um, and so uh, we actually have equality here. And now the rest of the argument is pretty standard, I think. I mean, so let's take an uh, ample divisor on our base. Um, since uh, minus kx over b is ample, we can find some d, which is equal to uh, an effective divisor d, which is a q linear equivalent to, to kx over b, or minus kx over b minus the small um, uh, perturbation such that um, our pair xd is log canonical. Um, so on one hand, just by, by our choice of d, we get that uh, kx over b plus d is q linear equivalent to the pullback of um, a small anti-ample divisor. Um, but on the other hand, um, I guess the canonical bundle formula should be kx, KX uh, over b plus d. By the canonical bundle formula, um, kx over b plus d is just the pullback of a semi-ample divisor. Um, and this is our contradiction. So the point is that somehow, um, you know, if you have a canonical fauna affiliation, this, would, this gives a contradiction to the uh, classical canonical bundle formula. Um, so, in other words, so again, I, I just want to emphasize every fond affiliation is strictly log canonical. And this is, again, in contrast to the case of varieties, right? I mean, there are smooth fond varieties, right? But there are no, there are no smooth fond affiliations. Um, every fond affiliation is actually highly, highly singular. And from the perspective of creating a modulized space for fond affiliations, this is a problem. Um, there's no way, there's, it, you know, there isn't, doesn't seem to be a natural BAB type bound in a statement that we can say. Um, so again, here's just an example. So let Xn be the cone over a, a rational curve of degree n, and let uh, Fn be the foliation whose leaves are just lines passing through the vertex of the cone, um, and let L be one such line. So it's it's easy to check that actually Kfn dot with L is minus one, and that uh, Fn is log canonical, but the the singularities of the underlying space are definitely unbounded. Um, right. I mean, it's it's uh, you know the, the the local fundamental group is is unbounded around these singularities. So there's no absolutely no way to put these foliations into a bounded family. <clears throat> and like I said, from the perspective of BAB, this isn't surprising, right? I mean, BAB tells us that epsilon log canonical epsilon log canonical fond varieties in a in a fixed dimension, um, I should say, are bounded um, for a fixed choice of epsilon. Um, but as a direct consequence of Rougeau and Joel's result is that the, the set of epsilon log canonical foliations where epsilon is positive 
is empty. So we're kind of, you know, up in the air, like, you know, what's what, what's the right, you know, what's the right notion of a moduli space for fauna affiliations? Like what, what data should we be fixing? How should we be bounding the, like, what should we, 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 we be bounding to, to, um, to fix this? So um, I want to um, uh, talk about a slightly different problem a, a, or a different question where the same problem arises. And, and this has to do with volumes of foliations. So um, just recall the following definition. So given a, a big Cartier divisor D on a variety X, we can define its volume um, just to be the, uh, this expression, this, this limb soup expression, just, uh, it's just a measure of the, uh, the asymptotic growth rate of sections of the, um, the line bundle uh, OMD. Um, I guess uh, also recall that when D is NEF, we have that the volume of D is just D raised to the, it's the top intersection uh, number of, of D. So, I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure this is well known, but you know, this volume is a, is a fundamental invariant for varieties. Um, and we're often interested in, in, in understanding its behavior. You know, what, what values can vol take on? Um, and one one simple question is well does does vol achieve um, does it achieve a minimum value or if it doesn't achieve a minimum value can we bound it from below um, in a way which is independent of x of course um, so let's just this this is just a stupid fact a, a very classical fact let's let x be a smooth surface of general type then the volume of kx is always bigger than or equal to one um, the proof is pretty simple we just run the MMP um, we have that. Uh, kx is equal to the pullback of kx prime plus e where e is effective so in particular the um uh the volume of kx is bigger than the volume of kx prime um on the other hand because kx prime is nef and cartier we know that kx prime squared is bigger than or equal to one um so in particular the volume of kx was bigger than one to begin with so what about what if we try to do the same thing for foliations so let's let f be a foliation with canonical singularities on a smooth surface. Is there a lower bound for the volume of KF um, independent of F in, in exactly in the same, exactly analogous to this, this classical fact? Um, well, we can try and do the same thing. We can think, well, let's just run the MMP and see what happens. Um, this worked in the surface case. So we know that the MMP exists for surface foliations. This is um, a result due to Michael McQuillan. So let's start with an X, X is smooth surface, uh, F of foliation with canonical singularities and KF pseudo effective. Um, of course, there's a more general statement that one can make. This isn't, you know, this isn't the best thing one can say. Um, but the important thing is that there exists a, a birational morphism, um, X, uh, F down to Y, G, which um, we can factor as a sequence of contractions of KF negative curves, uh, KF negative rational curves, which are tangent to F, um, and this results in a model G where KG is NEF. So it looks very similar to the classical MMP for foliations, right? Or sorry, for surfaces. We just blow down rational curves, which are KX negative. But there's um, there's a problem or a feature, if you will, or well something. Um, and in contrast to you know the, the case of varieties, are, are we're going to produce singularities on our underlying space? Um, uh, on our space underlying the foliation when we run the foliated MMP. We don't preserve, preserve smoothness of the underlying space. So uh, it can actually have cyclic quotient singularities of any order. And I'll give an example of this on, on the next slide. But the, the problem is, is that uh, KG isn't Cartier anymore. It's only Q Cartier. So, well, sorry, but it doesn't even need to be Q Cartier. Um, if we're on a smooth so surface. Where it is not. Well, that's when we produce, I mean, if we're producing a canonical model, yeah, but if we're starting with a smooth surface and we're running the MMP, this preserves quotient singularities. Now, if we want to pass down to the canonical model, I agree that, yeah, we, we, uh, we break Q Cartier-ness, but. Ah, so you contract just, so what just, is the model you take? Sorry? Uh, what kind of model do you take here? I mean, yeah. it's not analog of the previous one um no so what i'm doing is i'm okay so i'm contracting minus one f chains only so i'm just i mean i'm i'm only contracting some every step i contract a kf negative curve a kf negative rational curve 
Um, and I, I don't connect, contract anything which is KF trivial. So it's only KF negative steps. So, I mean, you, you're absolutely right that if we wanted to pass down to the canonical model, like if, if we wanted to contract things which had, if we wanted to contract curves which were KF trivial and had negative self-intersection going on to the canonical model, I, I agree. Then we produce, you know, these, you know, these, uh, these uh, cusp type singularities. But if we're just going down to a minimal model and not a canonical model, um, we only produce quotient singularities. Hopefully that, uh, but I agree. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there are some subtleties here, but, but just for producing minimal models, I mean, for producing minimal models of foliations, you know, it's, it's good enough. We always stay in the category of KLT singularities. Um, but yeah, so I guess, yeah, so yeah, in the case of a minimal model, KG is Q Cartier. Of course, if we go down a canonical model, it might not be Q Cartier, but that's a different story. It's an interesting story. Um, and maybe um, we, we could talk more about uh, talk more about that in a bit. Um, so uh, a priori, KG squared could be any rational number. Um, so here, here's exactly the, the problem with, or you know, the, the quote unquote problem with the foliated MMP, right? I mean, it's just how it is. Um, so consider the foliation on C2 generated by the vector field partial partial X. So this is just a smooth foliation on C2. Um, this foliation is invariant underneath the uh, Z mod MZ action on C2, just given by, you know, you know, multiplication by um, a root of unity. Um, and so in particular, what we get is we get an induced foliation on the Sikup quotient singularity X. Now, the, the crucial point is that this is a terminal foliation singularity and not a log terminal foliation singularity. So in particular, um, this terminal foliation singularity will always show up on some MMP for some foliation. So we can have, in some sense, arbitrarily bad, uh, arbitrarily bad singularities, um, like arbitrarily bad KLT singularities underlying uh, a terminal foliation singularity. And this, this is really the heart of the problem. Um, so again, just to reiterate, I mean, bounding volumes of foliations from below is hard because singularities uh, arising in the course of the KF MMP are unbounded. Um, and this is in some sense the same problem we came up with, came up against when trying to understand uh, fauna foliations. We, we couldn't bound the singularities of the underlying variety. And at least, you know, there wasn't a clear way to do it. So again, this is somehow the, the heart of the issue, it seems. Um, so I want to suggest um, a kind of workaround to these problems. Um, and this isn't the only workaround, it's just one, one philosophy to it. So one idea might be to deform the canonical bundle slightly. Um, we should consider kf plus eta kx, where eta is just a very small, a small number. So just slightly, slightly add a bit of kx to it. Um, why is this a reasonable decision? Um, so uh, I guess one way to look at it is that um, you could think of the problem with the foliated MMP in some sense is that it only sees singularities in the leaf direction. It doesn't see singularities in the transverse direction. And so what's happening is when we run the foliated MMP, we're losing control of singularities in the transverse direction. And so by adding in a small amount of kx, so adding in a small amount of kx is, is the same thing as adding in a small amount of the conormal bundle. So this, this, this kind of adjoint divisor in some sense should be keeping track of what's happening in the transverse direction to the foliation. So maybe that's good enough to get us some control. So uh, maybe as a first piece of evidence um, that this isn't totally bonkers, is um, let's consider maybe if we can run an adjoint MMP for divisor of the form kf plus eta kx on surfaces. So even though, I mean, this is this is kind of a, a stupid point, but you know, I think it's, it's worth you know, bringing home. Uh, so even though we know that we can run the MMP for each half of the above divisor, so we, can, we know we can run KF MMPs by, by, by Michael's work, and we know we can run KX MMPs by, well, I mean, this is classical. It's not clear if we can run a simultaneous MMP for this adjoint divisor. And the reason is, is that, and the fundamental problem is, is that maybe we lose control of the singularities of both F and X when we run this adjoint MMP. Um, and so the real problem that we have to be sure of when running this MMP is can we control the singularities of the foliation and the variety when we run this adjoint MMP? And in general, this isn't possible. In, in general, if you just choose any, any old ADA, you're gonna run into problems. But the first thing that um, uh, Roberto and I showed was that if, if ADA is sufficiently small, 
um, then we can actually achieve this control. So um, fix a to be between 0 and 1 over 6. Um, and let's start off with a smooth projective surface and let f be affiliation with canonical singularities. Um, then kf plus uh, then the kf plus epsilon kx MMP exists. Um, and in particular, we get some we get some nice control. So um, we get that uh, f prime has log canonical singularities. So this is a we lose a bit of control on the singularities of the foliation. We don't get canonical singularities on our on our resulting model. We just get log canonical singularities. But we do win because x prime has epsilon log canonical singularities where epsilon only depends on eta. I guess epsilon is strictly positive and depends only on eta. So maybe I should just reinforce that because epsilon being zero would, all, would work. So we, we sacrifice a bit of, of the singularity of f to gain a lot of control in the singularities of x. Um, but from the perspective of fauna foliations, this wasn't a big deal at all. Um, we already had font, we already had log canonical singular, singularities to begin with. Um, so the, uh, I don't really want to say much about the proof idea. The, the, the proof we have um, relies of, upon a very explicit analysis of um, Seidenberg's resolution algorithm for, for foliation singularities. And it's just a, a sort of bookkeeping work between what happens with Seidenberg's resolution algorithm um, and then you know, some, some standard facts in the classical MMP. Um, th this is where the 1 over 6 comes from. I don't have an intu I don't have a, a conceptual reason why one over six works, but it, it falls out of this explicit analysis of Seidenberg's uh, Seidenberg's um, algorithm. Um, so, um, like I said, so you know, KF plus eta KX seem seem to be better behaved from the perspective of a boundedness of singularities. So let's um, <clears throat> and I guess uh, another aside I want to make. Um, I just want to say this out loud. I don't want to overburden these slides with notation, but um, really, the um, really what we should be doing is we and what we do do is we can measure singularities of affiliation with respect to these adjoint divisors. The, so we have these notions of adjoint canonical and adjoint log canonical, and these are the natural classes of singularities to work with with these divisors. Um, I, I don't want to get too far into it. Um, this was also worked out in some earlier work by uh, George Pereira and Roberto Svaldi. Um, but this is somehow the natural class of singularities. I don't want to you know overburden things with with this, but I just want to mention that. Um, so we define an eta adjoint fauna affiliation just to be a pair where x is smooth, f has canonical singularities, and minus kf plus eta kx is ample. Um, and so the, the following is basically just a, just a stupid immediate consequence of, of our MMP result and, and BAB. Um, it's just that the, the set of, for eta sufficiently small, the set of eta adjoint fauna affiliations is birationally bounded. So we actually now get some sort of bound in the statement. But, but there's a problem here, is that, um, you know, or uh, there's at least a moral problem. Um, you know, are eta adjoint final objects even the right objects? So, um, you know, if eta is big enough, you can imagine you can have a general type foliation on a fauna surface such that uh, for some eta, kf plus eta kx will be anti ample. So somehow the eta adjoint fauna foliations are going to have, there's going to be too much in there, there's going to be too much crap in this moduli space. Um, and maybe even worse, you know, maybe there's some really interesting general type foliations that we should really be putting in the general type moduli space, which are getting sucked into this fauna, foli fauna moduli space. So this is this is a bit of a problem. So we have to make sure, I mean, that we just to do a reality check, we have to make sure that you know somehow these adjoint op objects are still looking like the correct objects. Um, and this amounts to understanding the following threshold. So we want to look at this um, following adjoint pseudo-effective threshold, and that's just the supremum such that kf plus tkx is pseudo-effective. And again, where x is a smooth surface, f is a foliation with canonical singularities, and kf is big. Um, I guess the, uh, the silly example is that um, for p2, this is always bigger than one third. Um, but is this true in greater generality? So does there always exist a tau naught such that this threshold is always bigger than tau naught for all foliations? It's independent of X and F. Is it, does there always exist this tau naught? Um, so I guess our you know, main result in these directions is that this, this tau naught exists. So there exists a tau naught such that the uh, pseudo effective threshold with respect of uh, KF with respect to KX uh, is bigger than tau naught. Uh, for all uh, for all x where x is a smooth surface and f is a foliation with general type with canonical singularities. Um, so 
this has the following um, consequence. Um, so for all t smaller than tau naught, there exists an m depending only on mt, such that if x is a smooth surface, f is a foliation of general type with canonical singularities, then m times kf plus t kx defines a birational map. So by perturbing kf slightly, we get this very strong boundness result. So I, I want to draw your attention to uh, some very other similar and very interesting results by Haken and Langer, um, where what they showed is they said that, well, they can forget about kx. They can just look at kf straight away. So they can show um, a result like this for mkf, but th they have to, to bound the Hilbert polynomial um, of, of the foliation. So really, the dream statement would be a bound like m, which doesn't depend on anything. And uh, I mean, so, you know, so with Haken and Langer, by, control, by, by you know, controlling the Hilbert polynomial, they get this, this bound on MKF. And for us, by perturbing KF slightly, we also get a bound which is independent of the Hilbert polynomial. So I mean, somehow, the, the, the optimum statement is somehow a fusion of these two. Um, I don't see how to do that. Um, that seems like a hard problem, but it's very interesting. But I think you know, somehow, these, these look like two, two results which are pointing in the direction of um, some some third best case scenario. Um, so um, I guess a, another corollary of this affected by rationality result um, is that is again this sort of a, a perturbed answer to our volume question. So um, for any t between uh, zero and t naught or tau naught, there exists a vt which bounds the volume of the foliation from below. So again, I, I don't know how to bound the volume of kf from below, but after perturbing it a bit, I can always bound it from below. <clears throat> so maybe with the, the last little bit left, I want to maybe try and sketch some ideas about how we prove this. So um, I guess fix some tau or t less than 1 over 5. That should really be 1 over 6. And run a uh, kf plus uh, t mmp or t naught mmp. There we go. So if, if kf plus t naught at kx is pseudo effective, there's nothing to show. So we can assume that we terminate in a Mori fiber space object. Yeah. And actually, um, it's not hard to reduce to the case where we, we, we reduce to a, a, a T naught adjoint Fano object. Um, that, that's not so bad. So maybe by shrinking, shrinking T naught a bit more, we can always reduce to this case. Um, so the point is, is that um, X prime is an epsilon log canonical Fano surface. And so it belongs to a bounded family. Again, the point was, the point of running this adjoint MMP is we bound the singularities in an underlying surface. And so we get that our we get that after running this MMP, these, these bad foliations where the pseudo-effective threshold is small um, belong to a bounded family. Um, and so in particular, we can shrink T1 again um, in a way that depends only on its family, such that KF prime plus T1 KX prime is pseudo-effective. So we'd, we'd really like to say that T1 is this is this this tau not the Ceph threshold we wanted to uh, to compute, um, but this isn't true, right? The the, the problem is at, at the heart of it. The, the problem is is that um, in other words that uh, F prime has log canonical but not canonical singularities. Or to put it another way, we ran a KF plus T not KX MMP um, and not a KF plus T one KX MMP, um, and the dis the failure to be able to lift sections um, occurs exactly at the log canonical singularities of F prime. But what one can show actually is that if you can't lift the sections, if you know if somehow you had a KF plus T naught MMP, which was not a KF plus T1 KX MMP, then actually the 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 log the foliation log canonical singularities you produce belong to a bounded family. So the, uh, the crucial observation is that, remember, a, um, a, a strictly log canonical foliation singularity had two positive integer eigenvalues. And the crucial point is, is that if we run this MMP and it's not a KF plus T1 KX MMP, then actually the, the eigenvalues of the log canonical singularity belong to a finite set, which depends only on T1. So, um, what we, so in other words, you know, in the total space of our big family, our, our big bounded family of foliations, um, we have some big Zariski open subset where um, KF 
uh, plus T1KX is Ceph. So these are good foliations. So, so generically speaking, we can lift sections after perturbing T0 a bit. Um, and then, uh, but, but then we have some closed subset where the foliation singularities belong to some finite, uh, finite set. Um, and these are the ones where we can't lift the sections. But the point is that this is again a bounded family and the foliation singularities belong to a bounded set. And so in particular, we can resolve the foliations to ones with canonical singularities in a bounded way. So call this resolution YG to X prime F prime. So we can, you know, after, so the bad foliations are, are bounded in a very strong way. And this is the crucial observation. Um, and so now we can find, and so on this resolution, we can find a smaller T2, so T2 smaller than T1, such that KG plus T2Y is pseudo effective. Um, and because we've resolved to foliations with canonical singularities, there's no problem in lifting sections anymore. Um, and so in particular, this T2 we get, so again, we just kept shrinking T1 um, according to these various families we produced. Um, so taking T0 equal to T2 um, does the trick. So I, I guess the problem with this, um, and, and so and this is and this is how we get our, our threshold. Um, so one problem with this, I guess, you know, or something I'd like to fix with this is um, this is highly non-constructive. It depends a lot on, um, you know, this proof doesn't give us any clue about what tau naught actually is. So that's a big question. What what actually is the optimum value of tau naught? Um, I should also mention that. Um, we can do this result um, also with a boundary. So uh, in terms of, we were, we were initially interested in bounding the automorphism group of foliations. Um, and, uh, um, and, and to do that, you need to, you, you have to do this with a boundary. So we're able to do all these, all these results also with a boundary. So um, uh, maybe I, I just want to end with, with two questions, which I, uh, I think are kind of interesting. So, um, let MT be the moduli space of T adjoint fauna foliations, or maybe T adjoint general type foliations, just in complete uh, analogy. Um, a priori, this, this moduli space depends on T. So what's happening as T goes to zero? Somehow the, these moduli spaces should be approaching um, the, the correct moduli space, whatever that is. I don't know. I mean, it's, it, it's a bit unclear. Like, you know, are these moduli spaces birational to each other as T gets smaller? Um, I think that's an interesting question. Um, the second one is um, what? So we have this lower bound vol of KF plus TKX, where um, V of T is strictly positive. Um, what happens to V of T as T goes to zero? So again, you know, this uh, when we produce this volume bound, you know, it, it comes out of you know just some general boundedness results about um, fauna fauna surfaces. Um, uh, you know, what happens to VT as T approaches zero? Does it approach a positive constant? I mean, if it does, then we're very happy. That gives us our desired lower bound um, on the volume of the canonical class of a foliation. Um, but it, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what happens to it as it gets smaller. So I think that's an interesting problem too as well. Um, so uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll end there. Um, and uh, thanks very much for your, uh, for your attention.